Hello again, everyone. This is Zombie Kids Rule, and uh, it's time to finally get uh, get back to um, doing this explanation video or explanation tutorial for the demo that I posted a little while back about the um, the die twenty uh, type uh, combat combat experimenting with events. So you know, just kind of precursor this. Um, you know, the reason the reason I'm delving down this road is because I'm a little overwhelmed by plugins that are out there for combat systems. I don't like generally the combat system in RPG Maker. Um, I'm not a huge fan of of the uh, JRPGs. Uh, you know, I have particular preferences, and so mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm kind of at a point where I, I want to learn, even if it takes me a very long time. I want to learn how to you know make my own combat system. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm taking pieces of what would be needed for a combat system, and I'm just experimenting with them and playing around with them and saying, how can I do this? How can I do that? Um, it doesn't mean that everything I experiment with would be the way I want to go. It's just, it's all part of the learning process. So again, this is going to be the explanation for, uh, and actually I'm going to demo this again because I added things to it. I made changes. Uh, which is something I do all the time. I just keep tweaking things. So I'm going to do the demo again. I'm going to show what it does, and then I'll do the explanation of how I built it. And so, again, I'll just make the caveat, like I usually do in my videos. You know, I'm not an expert. I'm still a learner. Uh, you know, I'm still very new to this. And so I'm not saying this is the the best way to do it. I'm not saying, you know, this is even a good way to do it. All right, what I'm saying is, is, this is a way that works. I've I've done it. I've tested it. It works. Now, whether it'll work in a larger scale or or within a larger system, you know, maybe not. But the whole point is, this is a way to do something which maybe will, you know, if if you're still new like me, you'll see something and you'll say, hey, that's pretty cool. I could do this in something else or, or you know, I can change this. I can tweak this. This is something that that is uh, giving me some more base knowledge and then I can build off of that. So, so that's the whole purpose of this. And it's very, very possible that plugins exist out there that do this com the same or better, probably better. Um, again, I'm, I want to show how to, how to invent something. Um, using and and some of this uses scripts, but that's all within the events, um, not using plugins. Uh, so there's that. Uh, also, I you know I always say I, I I don't focus on fancy graphics, fancy maps right now. Uh, in fact, you know <laughs> some of my stuff clearly uh, needs to be better visually. Um, this is going to show a die twenty that gets rolled, and and yeah, to me it looks crappy. Uh, but it's just testing it. It's testing the functionality. Um, I'll worry about fine-tuning the graphics and you know making things pretty and make things look fancy. That comes later. Right now, I'm just doing the the um, the, the the I guess I would call the mechanics, the functionality, the concepts. How do how do I make this work? So again, and I will just throw out one one caveat out here. Not a caveat, but a plug. Um, if you are watching this and if you have not joined rpgmakerweb.com and specifically going to the forums, I highly recommend you do that because there's a lot of great things over there. Um, you can ask questions. People will give you help. Uh, it's a great community, and um, you'll find all kinds of, of really useful things over there. And you can, you know, even if you just lurk and read posts, you're going to learn stuff over there. All right, so let me show you what's happening because I did update this. Uh, so um, we're going to go ahead and play this. Okay, so I'm going to turn that up a little bit. So I'm going to start my new game. All right, so um, right off the bat, it's it gives us an opportunity to reset the combatant's uh, health, attack, and defense because the way I built this, I just have it determined at random right now. And so right now, um, Reed, as one of the attackers, has a health of 21, uh, a attack of 4, and a defense of 2. Uh, Priscilla has a health of 24, attack of 6, and a defense of 2. Actually, that's not bad. Um, I kind of like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep it, and then I'll show the functionality of re-rolling it later. So I'm going to say, uh, no, I don't want to reset it. So now it's waiting for me to click here. So uh, it's it's set on the die 20. I'm going to click, 
and it's going to show it rolling, you know, per se, uh, and Reed is attacking uh, Priscilla. So go ahead and roll. He gets an eight, and you notice he moved over, tried to hit her, and it said that he missed. Now it's Priscilla's turn. So uh, this is still showing eight. I'm going to go ahead and click. Priscilla rolls. Okay. Definitely going to miss. Okay, and we'll we'll talk about why these are misses just the, by the, the the threshold that I set. So we get to roll again. That's going to be a hit. <clears throat> okay, so we hit her. You saw it was a hitter. She lost some some hit points. Right now it's her turn. Okay, evaded. Now that was something I added from the demo. Uh, uh, I mean, after I made the demo. I wanted to make it where it was possible that the defender could roll, and if they get a higher roll than the attacker's to, to hit roll, then they could evade it instead of being injured. So that was something I added, and it, and it, and it worked. So Reed evaded Priscilla's attack. So now it's his turn. Okay. Oh, she evaded, right? See, so wow, that was that was pretty good considering how uh, he got a seventeen for a roll. <clears throat> okay, she hit him, and he lost some hit points. Okay, he's a miss. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see if we get a nat natural twenty or a natural one. Oh, we did. So natural one, she missed, and then she did it. So <laughs> she hurt herself. So she's gonna actually lose six hit points here. Yep, she lost six hit points because she hit herself. Um, if they get a natural 20, they do <coughs> double damage, okay, if they manage to get a natural 20. <coughs> Might not see this here. Ooh, nat 20. <coughs> so he just did a massive amount of damage to her. He did, well, not massive considering how his attack is only four. So he did double damage, so he did eight damage, but then it was reduced by her her defenses of two. So it's still double, but, you know, anyway. <coughs> okay, and let's see. Who's going to win? Ooh, good roll. <coughs> okay, she's down to six. Oh, she's going to miss. See, now she's she does more damage. So uh, she does an attack of six. He has a defense of two, so she does four damage when she hits. He only does two damage when he hits, right? Because he has attack of four and a defense of two, so he only does two damage. Now, again, this is not a D&D &D type system. This is just testing, right? So definitely not saying this is D&D &D reality or whatever, Dungeons and Dragons reality, but no. Oh, she evaded. Okay. Oh, he evaded. <coughs> Smacked her. Okay, he does less damage, but, uh, ooh, see, look, now he's down to five, she's down to four. It's getting close. He missed. Ooh, ooh, he evaded. Staying alive, staying alive. Okay. Smacked him, he's down to one, so one more hit, and he's gone. Oh, she's down to two. So now it really comes down to who hits, who hits the each other first. She gets her chance. Hope if she misses or he evades or she gets a one, it's all over. <coughs> oh, okay. She knocked him out. So he's down to negative three. Reed's defeated, and then it says, "Hey, do you want to do it again?" Well, yeah. Maybe I, I added this, I think, or maybe I didn't from the demo because I want to. I want to be able to um, try it as many times as I want. So do I want to reset the combatants? Actually, that's not too bad. But when I say yes, you'll see that these are going to change. Okay, so now 23, 6 attack, 0 defense. 23, 5 attack, 0 defense. That should be a pretty even match, right? Um, all depending on who gets, if you get a, a natural 20, if you get a natural 1, you're going to have some significant impact. Or you get, a, uh, you get evasion going on, right? Okay, so I'm going to say no, and um, so that's that's pretty much that. Now, I did notice one thing that um, I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's waiting for me to, to attack. That's right. So we're all good. Uh, I'm not going to go through this again. Um, it's basically the same, the same content, so I'm just going to shut that down. All right, so 
I did add some features from the last demo. So that's that's how it's that's how it works. Uh, so now what this is using is this is using one uh, event up here. It is using two common events that get called. And then these two events here are actually just blank events that I'm using for um, show animation. So when I click on these, th there's nothing to them. It's a it's it's blank. They're below characters. You know, the player can walk over them. It's it's fine. Um, so these are actually just being used so I can show an animation on the picture. Uh, so Reed's picture is here, Priscilla's picture is here, and I'm using these blank events to show animation. Now I should also say that the reason this works is because one of the moderators, um, oh, I think it was moderator, I think pretty sure it's moderator, uh, I'll have to go back and look. One of the moderators over on RPGmakerweb.com um, in the forums, uh, in answering one of my questions, actually provided a, uh, a plugin. Uh, a, a, a very simple plugin, uh, which is this animation on picture. And what it does is, um, again, this is a downloadable plugin from um, RPGmakerweb.com. Uh, I'll, I'll have to try to find the thread. Uh, map animations show on the picture container instead of the tile map. And, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Let me, um, uh, let me see. Uh, actually, I'll, we'll, we'll check it out uh, if I click on it. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So um, this is say it's a status on. Oh, this is perfect. I don't have to. Uh, uh, the the uh, the the creator already uh, put it in here for me, so I don't have to go look for it. Um, this is the description. Here's the link to the 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 um, thread where they posted it, saying, "Hey, here's a here's a simple plugin. Um, you can use this, right? And and this is what it does." Uh, and here's the help. Free to use and or modify for any project. No credit required. I would still credit the person if I, you know, if I ended up using this, I'd still credit them uh, just because I think that's right. But this is this is basically um, the plugin and you can find it here. And so what would happen is if if there's a picture on top of this event, you need these events to show animation. You have to show animation on an event on the map. If a picture is covering that, when it actually plays, normally the animation is under the picture. So you can't see it. It's under the picture. Maybe you might see little pieces of it, but you won't see the core animation. With that plugin that was provided, all it does is it changes uh, the animation to, instead of being shown on the map, it shows on top of the picture that's being displayed. It's still centered on the event, but it's on top of the picture. So it's a really cool little plugin. And, uh, and, and I, the reason, you know, I originally posted was I was, you know, playing around with making my own combat system. And I wanted to be able to show animations of attacks on the pictures that are being uh, shown. So anyway, that's what these two empty events are for. And I and I highlighted the plugin. And there are two common events that get called. So when we also noticed that when um, I started the game, the play test, uh, the the player is actually set to invisible to begin with. Okay, so the player is set to, to invisible. Uh, transparency is on. And then uh, if I actually went through the whole thing and then said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do it again, it would basically clear the pictures and uh, it would turn the transparency off so the player would appear on the map and then they could, they could move through. All right. So that, that's what it also does. So this is the event here that starts everything. Um, event one, troop placement. So it has five pages. And when uh, page number one is the first one that is is active, right? Because it's the uh, when we first start the game or when we first start the play test or whatever, this this is the highest page where the conditions are met. There are no conditions. It is set to run in parallel. So as soon as we do a play test on this map, this event is going to run. Or if I were to say transfer from one map to this map, this parallel event would immediately start running. So what does it do? First thing it does, it freezes the player in place. Now, the player is not even visible. So the, the little sprite is not even visible 
because I have it set here under system to be start in transparent. So the, the little sprite doesn't even show up on the map. Okay. And I'm going to go down here to get ready for the, um, uh, for the common events. Whoops. Uh, where are you? There we go. Okay. So we'll get, we'll get there. Um, so regardless, here I am. So we, we freeze the player in place so that it can't move around. They can't use the controls to move around. I've, I've shown this before in previous videos of mine, right? You set a movement route for the player with um, basically no movement commands set to repeat, right? So player, no commands, repeat, no wait, and that's your freezing the player. They can't move anymore. So you have to set them free when you want them to be able to move. This label reset, um, I, I should caveat this by saying, you know, as I, a lot of times when I'm building uh, events, I, I, I start with the basic question of how do I do this, you know, simple part, and then I add to it and I add to it and I add to it and I add to it. So sometimes I have to go back and say, wait, I need to get back to the beginning. So I'm going to use a jump to label. Or sometimes I, I figure out, oh, I need to jump further into the event. So I'm going to use jump to label. And, and, and so a lot of these get added later down the road. I don't design them th that way. I don't design the whole thing out because I'm not able to do that yet. Um, so anyway, we'll, you'll see some of that um, of why things are uh, the way they are. So the first time through, uh, when this gets triggered, we freeze the player. We have a label here because we're going to jump back here um, for, for at certain times. The next thing that's happening is um, all of these variables are being set. Now, in a real game, this wouldn't be required because these are these would be set, uh, you know, at at startup of the game. But what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to have um, three simple uh, statistics. Okay, hit point, attack, and defense. And I'm using Reed and Priscilla. <coughs> so, very first thing off the bat is using variables, it's randomly setting the hit points. So first read, read HP is set to random 15 to 25. Uh, variable 266, read attack, ATK, is set to random four to six. Read defense is set to random zero to two, so you can have actually a defense of zero. Uh, Priscilla uh, HP is randomly set, same thing, 15 to 25. Uh, uh, Priscilla attack is being set to random four to six, same thing. Priscilla defense is randomly set to zero to two. So they have the potential of having the same hit points, the same attack, the same defense. Again, you wouldn't have to do this normally, but for, for, for just testing this single event, I have to set these uh, at the beginning so that um, they have their hit points, their attack, and their defense. Then what's happening is we got to place the pictures on the map. So this is just show picture, and it is, and, and actually let me go back here. I mean, I, I presume that most people have seen this before, but here's the control variable in the event commands. You, you pick your variable or create one and name it, and then random and the, the span, right, that you want to use. Uh, and, of course, you select set right, for this instance, and you do that for all six of those. This is just the show picture command. Um, you have to give, you have to, you know, have, you have to do the number, right? Yeah, so we, this is our first picture, so it's picture number one. It's actor one underscore one, that's read. I'm setting where I want it to place using the pixels on the map. So X of 30, Y of 400, and I'm modifying the size of the image and then some other things. So when I click here and click edit, it is show picture. I have to say which picture. I have to say which image I want. Uh, and then this, this is either upper left or center, meaning that it's either the upper left corner of the picture that you're designating here or the center of the picture that you're designating here. Um, again, you can direct designate the X and Y, the pixels. Or you can do it with variables. I, I've been messing around with this uh, for something else I'm building. The scale of the picture, right? If the picture's too big, you have to scale it down. Or if it's too small, you have to scale it up. So you have to play around with this to until you, it looks the way you want it to look. That just takes uh, experimentation, trial, and error. 
Opacity, you can mess around with that. It just means how, how much you can see through the picture. Um, it defaults to 255, and most of the time I don't touch it. Blend mode, I don't play around with too much, but I did with my dice um, uh, thing earlier on. So you have to experiment with this to see exactly what it does. So again, if I were to double click, um, this is the show picture on page two of the event commands. Okay. So uh, I, I'm, I'm displaying Reed's picture. Then I'm using a plugin which comes default with uh, MZ. Okay. So here's my plugin manager. I have this turned on button picture that comes default. You just have to you have to add it to your project. It comes with MZ when you buy it. You have to add it to your project and then um, activate it. Text picture also comes with MZ. You just have to add it to your project and turn it on. Um, same with change equip on battle MZ, right? And same alt menu screen. So one of my previous videos uh, sh actually highlighted the this and this uh, for how you uh, how you turn it on, how you activate. I think how you add it, how you activate it, that sort of thing. Okay, so again, um, this is a plugin. It's the text picture, and you're basically taking text and converting it to a picture so you can show it on the screen. So if I want to find that, it's on page three. Plugin commands. I have to pick the plugin, which is text picture, and then uh, you know I have to pick the command name and and I have to do the the text right once you load the plugin. So here I'm just going to edit this. Uh, I I chose text picture text picture as the plugin. Um, there's only one command for this. It tells you what it does, and then you get to input your text. And so what this is doing is um, I made this where Oops. Uh, yeah, we'll go there. I made this where um, I'm, I'm displaying an icon, icon 84, which is a heart. I'm displaying a sword, uh, icon 97, and I'm displaying a shield, icon 128. And so this is going to be um, displayed uh, on uh, one row, right, going across. And then underneath those um, are the variables. So uh, variable 265, 266, and 267 that's going to display the value of the variables that are are set okay so this is reads hit point reads attack reads defense and you just have to mess around to get it lined up the way you want um, it may not look perfect the way it is but you know it, it it's in the general uh, spot so slash i and then the number in brackets is is the icon that's how you show an icon slash v and the number in brackets that's how you show the value of a variable OK, and so that's in the text line. And then this is required by the plugin to make this text uh, display as a picture. So you have to pick a, a new picture, picture two. Uh, it's blank. That That's the, basically the text is the picture. And again, you set your origin, your pixels, your um, scale for your width and height, opacity, whatever. You got to mess around with it. And that's um, so that's setting this as a picture on the screen. Then we want to show uh, Priscilla's picture. So show picture number three, right? Picture number three, the actor Priscilla. And then again, origin, X and Y, scale. You just have to figure out where you want it to be on the screen. And the way I do this is I started off with the common event and I, I would plug in the values do a quick play test, and if it wasn't where I wanted, I came back, tweaked the values, did another play test, tweaked the values, did another play test to get them lined up where I want them to be. So we've got Priscilla's picture, then we do the plugin command again. Same thing as this, only the, the values are changing. Instead of variable 265, it's 268 for Priscilla's hit, hit points. Instead of 266, it's 269. 267, it's 270. So up here, Priscilla, 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 right? Icons are staying the same. Then the show picture four in order to actually display this as a picture. So again, new another picture, number four. It's blank because this is the picture and just play around with where it shows up. 
Then I'm showing picture five, which is actually the dice. So we have a picture of a die 20 with, um, with a 20 showing as the value. So again, here we go, picture five, here's my image, right? And basically I have pictures of a die 20, right? Nothing fancy, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, they're not perfect. I, I, didn't, I didn't do it quite perfectly when I took the pictures. These are taken with my camera. This is not the right way to do it, but it works. So the, I'm using it. You have to just set where you want it to be. Again, test, uh, play around with this to, to have it show where you want it. Then these two are doing, are setting the text roll to attack and click the dice above and below the picture of the dice. So we, we do our uh, text, we do our um, blank picture, number six, so five and then number six to show the text above the dice. Then we do another, um, we do another uh, text here, click, click dice, do another blank picture, number seven, to show this uh, as, as a picture under the dice, right? So again, you just have to figure out where you want these to be uh, displaying on the screen. So once you've got read and then the stats and then Priscilla and the stats, and then you've got the dice and the roll to attack and the click, click dice, then we just have uh, show text. Do you want to reset the combatant stats? And then we show the icons again. It tells them what it is, right? And yes or no. And again, I added this because I wanted to be able to um, change the the um, the stats in case I wanted to run a different test. Like, you know what? I already saw what happens when you have zero defense. I want to make sure it's actually a higher defense. Or, you know... Um, Maybe their hit points are too low to run the test I want to do. So I just made this so, um, again, this is not practical game, uh, in-game stuff. This is more for me testing how this works and, and making sure everything works uh, properly. So then we have our show choices, yes or no. Um, and again, you know, this is what it looks like, right? There's uh, yes or no by, by choice. And, of course, clicking here, uh, that's on page one. Right underneath show text is show choice. Oops, sorry. Um, and so when yes, we're doing that jump to label reset, right? Because we get down to here and say, do you want to reset the stats? Well, yes, I do. Well, you got to jump to label reset. So we jump back up here and that lets us re-roll the stats and then it resets the pictures accordingly. When no, right, it doesn't tell it to do anything because it's immediately going to just drop down here. And what's it doing? Okay, so we're taking a variable, die 20 roll, and we're setting that to 20. And then we're also taking another variable, saved die 20 roll, and setting it to the die 20 roll. So saved die 20 will actually be a value of 20 as well. Uh, and then we're turning self switch A on. Now, why am I doing this? This was added, and it looks weird on this page. You're like, why, why do I need this here? Later on, we're going to be cycling through these, uh, these pages, and we're going to go to a common event for Reed to attack, and we're going to go to a common event for Priscilla to attack. And one of the things I noticed was the way I originally built it, if Reed rolled, say, an 11, when Priscilla got ready to roll, the dice would change back to a, di uh, to a 20 on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the dice. And then you'd roll and then say Priscilla got a 7. Before Reed rolled again, the dice would flip back to a 20. So it was always starting on 20. And, and I thought that looked weird. It, it didn't look quite right. So I said, you know what? i got to figure out how to make it so if Reed rolls an 11, that dice stays an 11 until I click on it again for Priscilla to attack. And that's what this is working towards. So I needed to know um, what... The first time through, it was important to set it to 20. Um, and then I needed to roll, what was the save? I needed to determine what was the saved value, right? Uh, and so anyway, it is important for when you cycle through this multiple times. It's not important the first time through necessarily, but when we when we go back to, oh, now it's read second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, sixth attack, or Priscilla's, then this becomes necessary. So anyway. That's why I'm setting these here. 
and then control switch self switch a on what that does is it moves this page forward and page number two self switch a is also parallel so that means that once it flows through this it gets down to here and it says hey turn on the self switch that means this page is going to become active because this is the highest page where the conditions are met self switch a is on and since it's parallel this page is going to start running so when we first started this page runs then it turns on its own self switch a so that this page will run immediately no no delay so what is this page doing well this is the one that is is going to um ultimately um let us click on the dice click on the dice to roll it now this <laughs> is added because when you come back to this event what this is doing this whole thing here this all these conditional branches is basically saying what was the saved role so what was the previous role and let's make sure that it still is visible so that we can click on it so the first thing this is doing is erasing picture five which is the dice okay why is it erasing picture five you know what i'm just going to tell you folks i'm going to be very honest here um maybe maybe i'm doing this the wrong way i don't know but i was i was experiencing some problems there were some weird effects happening and the way to solve it was i erased picture five <laughs> and then i drew it again okay now why that affected it i don't know it may have something to do uh with um making it so the picture is actually being uh you know clickable i i don't fully understand it myself folks i just know that when i didn't erase the picture and i just tried to have the um dice the the picture be clickable something wasn't working right so my solution was i i'm erasing picture five and then i'm taking whatever the value of it was supposed to be and i'm redrawing it and that's what these conditional branches are doing these 20 conditional branches all it's doing is it's saying hey if the die 20 roll is a one so the first time through we actually know it's a 20 right it is a 20 the first time through but on future cycles through this it will be anything from 1 to 20. so it's checking what what is this what is the saved role if if it was a one then i'm going to draw picture five show picture picture five as a die 20 as a, as a one right as a one and this is staying the same as it was on the first event where we drew the picture so 250 275 50 50 right that's staying the same whoops that's staying the same because i want the dice to stay in the same spot so uh, if it was a one draw the picture with a one if it was a two draw the picture with a two and it's still the same picture number five if it's a three picture five is going to be uh the picture of the three on the dice all the rest of this stays the same so that's what these 20 conditional branches are doing maybe there's a more effective way an efficient way to do that with scripts using four loops uh, again i'm not there yet i'm still trying to learn that and make it work effectively so i'm not quite there yet so it first checks the the 20 conditional branches um and, and again this you know hopefully you know how to do a conditional branch conditional branch if you know if the variable die 20 is equal to the value all right and then that's what we do so it's going to set the picture then this is using the plugin command button picture in order to make the picture clickable so I, I i picked my plugin button picture right so i had a choice between button picture and text picture i picked button picture there's only one command name it tells you what it does makes the specified picture clickable it requires you to pick a picture and to pick a common event so i set it to picture five that's my dice and i set my common event to 56 right so i have two common events i'm going to use and you can change those right i'm just double clicking when i do that so 
This is making the picture five clickable whenever the player wants to click on it. It's waiting 10 frames, which is 10 sixtieths of a second, which is one sixth of a second, because this is a parallel event. And in theory, this is going to loop through 60 times a second, 60 times a second, waiting for someone to click unless you have some sort of wait in here. Okay. Now, it's not going to loop for long because the common event, 56, is going to um, basically change this page. Okay. It's going to change to another page. But for the time being, however long the player sits and waits to click, this is just looping through, waiting for someone to click. And that's the end of page two. So eventually the player is going to click and common event 56 is going to be called. Okay, so cool. Let's go look at common event 56. This is common event 56. So the first thing common event 56 does is it turns on, it uses a script to turn on the self switch for uh, the map 20. I'm at map 27, which is the map we're on. Event 1, which is true placement. That's what we were working on. And the self-switch D, it's turning it on. Turning it on is true. Turning it off is false. I've shown this script in previous tutorials. So dollar sign game, capital self, capital switches, dot set, capital value, parentheses, brackets, 27 for the map, comma, 1 for the event, event comma single quotes capital d for the self switch closing brackets comma true to turn the switch on closing parentheses okay and there's your script okay and the way you get to it is on your event commands page three script okay now so that that does that it turns self switch d on well that immediately makes this page, right? It's going to move the event from this page running forever to page five, self switch D. And page five is my kind of waiting page. It's not parallel, so it's not running, it's not doing anything. There's no contents, it's not doing anything. So this is, this is my, hey, event. Don't do anything anymore. Wait, because self switch D is on. Okay, that's what that's what's happening when that turns on self switch D. So then, what's it going to do? Well, this is something I added um, from my first demo. I wanted to have if you if you rolled a natural twenty, you did double damage. If you rolled a natural one, there's a variety of things that could happen. But for this purposes, I just said, you know what? Let's have them damage themselves. So I created two switches and I said, control switch, if, no, it's actually not, not if, control switch, uh, 50, nat 20 roll is on or off. So I'm making sure it's turned off here. The first time through, the first time we do this, it's going to be off because, because the switch not being, the switch is not being turned off on anywhere, but this, we're going to cycle through this, right? We're going to, we're going to call this common event, um, time after time after time. So I'm just double checking to make sure this is off. Same thing with the nat one roll. The switch is off. Just double checking. Then we have two variables here. Dice loop variable is set to zero because we're going to actually uh, use this to track how many times we loop through th something. And then dice loop random max is set to randomly to 40 to 60. And what this is doing is it's, it's as I as I decided, I said, you know, when you do that little thing where the dice changes its face value uh, to make it look like it's rolling, I don't want that to be the same uh, amount every time. So sometimes I want it to be 40. So it rolls through 40 really, really fast to make it look like it's rolling. Um, and so it's actually shorter, but sometimes it's all the way up to 60. So it goes through that 60 times instead of only 40. So it's randomly in between. That gives the appearance that it takes longer to do some rolls than others. That's all that's doing. So we have these things set. And again, um, you know, the way you do this is on the first page, control switches, right? And then you take, you, you know, create a new switch and name it or pick a switch, turn it on and off. 
you can actually uh, also turn on and off a range of switches, which I have not really played with yet, but uh, I, I need to because that's kind of cool. Uh, and then, of course, this is just creating two variables or setting two variables. Now, what's going to happen is this entire loop thing is going to go through, and this is what makes that dice change, makes it look like it's rolling. I mean, kind of looks like it's rolling. So we start our loop, and then we take our variable die 20 roll, and we uh, set it to a number from 1 to 20. And then once that happens, it's going to immediately figure out, okay, which, which value is it? Because that's the picture I have to show. So all of these conditional branches are actually just copy and pasted from this uh, parallel event over here, all right? Because we already did this once. And so this is just copy and pasted from that parallel event. Um, so it figures out which, what was the value? So which die, which die 20 uh, value am I going to show? Then it waits two frames, right? So it waits one thirtieth of a second, basically. Now, this is a change from my previous tutorials. For some reason, I had it in my head that after every single one of these conditional branches, I needed to have a wait command which is not true because it's only doing one of these. So instead of having a wait command after each conditional branch, you can just have it at the end. So it checks which one of these am I going to show. And then once I figure that out, then I'm going to wait, right? So I don't need all those wait commands. So this is a, this is a change from previous tutorials of mine. So it waits this really, really tiny amount of time. It increments, it adds one to that dice loop variable to say how many times have we looped through. Well, right now, it's only looped through once, or it's, it's on its first loop. But it's still going to check the conditional branch if the dice loop variable is equal to the dice loop random max, right? So anything from 40 to 60, if it's, if it's equal to that, that means I've looped through enough times, I'm going to break the, break the loop, right? And then this is just something as simple as conditional branch if variable is equal to variable, okay? So if, if, if I have looped through enough times, I'm going to break the loop, and I'm going to drop down here. Otherwise, if I have not reached this, I'm going to repeat above. So I'm going to jump back up to the beginning of my loop. And that's how, that's how loops work. Okay, cool. So now I've got my dice rolling and rolling and rolling, and, and it's, you know, showing me what's happening. I get to the point where it's looped through enough. Now, right after it's done, I'm going to take my control variable, saved die 20 roll, and set it to the last die 20 roll, the last one that it, that it went through. Why? Because... For for natural 20s, I wanted to use the the die, the die 20 roll before it gets modified because we're gonna we're gonna I'm modifying the die 20 roll by both the attack of the, the the person attacking and the defense of the defender. So before I modify that die 20 roll to see if the attacker hits, I want to make sure I know what the die 20 roll result result was. Right? Was it a natural 20 or a natural one? So I'm saving that. Then there is going to be two conditional branch checks because this was added uh, after I did the first demo. If the die 20 roll, d20 uh, roll, is, is equal to 20, if that's 20, I'm going to turn on that switch, nat 20 roll is on. So that later on down here, I can basically adjudicate or resolve the fact that Somebody rolled a natural 20. The switch is on. I need to do something. I'm going to do double damage. Or this conditional branch. If D20 roll is equal to 1, that means I got a natural 1. That's not good. I'm going to turn on the switch. Nat 1 roll is on or off. I'm turning it on. Because again, later on, I need to do something with that. They're going to hurt themselves. So I, I make sure that my die 20 roll is saved. I do my conditional branch checks. Is Was there a nat 20 or a nat 1? I wait one second 
just because as it's playing through, I want to make sure the player gets to see the last roll before other stuff um, starts moving along. So then I'm going to take the variable die 20 roll, and I'm going to add the attacker's attack. So when this, this common event is for Reed, this common event is for Priscilla. So I'm going to add Reed's attack to the die 20 roll. And I'm also going to subtract Priscilla's defense. Now, I could have done this in one line with a script. And I do that later on. But I was just lazy here. And I said, you know what? I can also just do it by modifying the die 20 roll twice. So uh, add Reed's attack and then subtract Priscilla's defense. It does exactly the same thing as if I used a script to do the math completely in one row. Okay, so I, I just decided to do it this way because, I don't know, I was lazy. So then it's going to check, all right, I know, I know what the end roll was. I just arbitrarily set this to uh, less than 12. Okay, so all of this is what happens if your die 20 modified roll is less than 12. So conditional branch, if the die 20 modified roll, right, modified, is less than 12, again, I just arbitrarily pick this, you know, I have, I'm going to have to really think about this in a, in, a, in a real combat system. What is it going to do? All right. It's going to move Reed's picture. So move picture number one. Uh, and it's going to, I'm going to tell it where I want it to move to. The pixels. The, the X and the Y pixels. Not changing the size of the picture. Not changing any of this. And I am having it go 10 frames. Take 10 frames to do it. So that's one sixth of a second. Um, and so uh, here's the move picture. You got to pick the picture. You get to set the speed, right? Constant speed, slow start, slow end, slow start and end. I wanted a constant speed. You, you, you know, your picture starting origin, your, where your X and Y are going to be, all this stuff. Duration, you can say how long you want it to take. So the more this is, the slower the picture goes. And I put wait for completion here. I uh, probably didn't need to, but I but I, I wanted to. Uh, or you know what? Maybe I did want to because um, it might affect the timing of everything. So wait for completion. And what this is doing, again, this is on page uh, two of the event commands, move picture. And what this is doing is it's now moving Reed's picture from here, and it's moving it across to come close to Priscilla's picture. Then it's playing a sound effect. Uh, I just picked wind, right? So Again, when you do the sound effect, you get to select, you get to listen to it, you get to tweak the pitch and the pan if you want to. Um, uh, that is on page two, uh, play SE. Okay, play SE. And so I chose wind for if you swung and you missed, right? So it moves Reed's picture. It plays a sound effect. It's also going to display the text of miss above the defender's uh, picture. So again, using that text picture plugin, uh, the text I'm using is miss, and then the slash C and two in brackets, that's just changing the color. That's changing the color of the word miss, okay? And if you forget um, how to use these commands, you just go to show text, hover over text, and then it gives you all of those different options. All of these, as far as I've tested, work. Well, they probably all won't, but but the ones I've tested so far have worked in the um, show picture, or I'm uh, not show picture, but the picture uh, text picture, text to picture plugin. Okay, so you can change the color. Uh, okay, so this, uh, so we move read, we play the sound effect. We're going to uh, make the text miss be a picture. We're going to show it as picture eight. So show picture eight blank again, because this is actually the picture. Figure out where I want it, right? I got to play around to make it show above the, the defender where I want it to be. Um, and then once that happens, I'm going to move picture one. So I moved it here. I'm going to move picture one back to where it was. So this makes the picture go doot. And then this makes the picture go doot back that way. All right, then I'm going to wait 60 frames. Again, one second, just, just to let the player see what's happening. And then I'm going to race picture eight. 
What is picture eight? Picture eight is the miss. So basically, you're, you know, after a second, that, that miss uh, label, if you want to call it that, or misinformation uh, picture is going to go away. So that's what it's first doing. It's checking if you missed, right? If your die 20 rolls less than 12, do this. Oh, but wait, what if they rolled a natural one? Oh, no, right? You can't roll a natural 20 and miss. So what if they roll a natural one? Okay, well, so if, conditional branch, natural one roll, meaning the switch is on, right? So if, conditional branch, the switch, natural one is on, then show text. You know, in this instance, this is Reed's uh, common event. Reed's attack was so bad, he hurt himself, right? So we know Reed is actually hitting himself. We're going to now uh, reduce Reed's hit points. So uh, variable for Reed's hit points, 265, minus subtract Reed's attack, right? So subtract the variable Reed's attack. Um, and remember, I'm not using the default tracking for hit points and stuff like that. I'm using variables. So then this is going to update the, the status icons uh, for read underneath his picture, right? So uh, using the plugin command, just, just like we used before, we can copy and paste it because um, it's showing the icons and it's showing the variables for read. So I can actually just copy and paste this from my parallel event. Um, and then, of course, this is the blank picture that shows the, the text, right? The text as a, as a picture. Um, so that's happening, right? The, if nat, nat 1 is on, that's happening, um, uh, you know, if, if that switch is, is, is actually turned on. And then we have to check, well, wait a second. What if by Reed hitting himself, he actually gets himself down to zero or below uh, zero? So that's what this conditional branch is doing, right? And you can see that they're nested, right? If, and then underneath this, if, right? And then underneath this is another one. So these are nested conditional branches, right? This is under this. This is under this. They're not all the same line. So if Reed's hit points are now zero or lower, then we're going to show text, Reed defeated himself. We're going to use this script, clear all pictures. Uh, I've used this in other tutorials. So dollar sign game, capital screen, dot clear, capital pictures, um, uh, parentheses, and that is essentially clearing all the pictures from the screen. If you didn't want to clear all the pictures, you would have to clear the pictures. Well, as far as I know, you'd have to erase each picture one at a time. Um, maybe there's a way to do clear pictures from one picture to another, like say pictures two to eight. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't played around with that yet. Uh, it's, it's possible. I don't know. It could be. And then this is doing the script to, uh, to control the self switches for that event one. And it's turning D off. So self switch D is false. So it's turning it off. It's turning self switch C on to true. Okay. So it's doing two self switches here, turning one off D and one on true. And I'll, we'll jump there and look at what that means uh, in just a second. It's also turning that, that switch nat one off because I don't want the nat one switch to be on because the next time I cycle through here, it'll think I rolled a natural one when that's not true. So I got to make sure I turn that switch off. And then this is going to exit the event processing. Why? Well, because Reed knocked himself out. So if he knocked himself out, then we can't continue, right? So we're going to exit the event processing. This event processing, this common event, the fact that we're turning this switch on over here is going to let us continue uh, uh, testing this. So exit event processing means I'm skipping the rest of this common event. Now, before we proceed, let's see what this uh, turning D off and turning C on does. So I'm over here. I was on page two. Common event switched me to page D, or I'm page five, which is control switch, uh, self switch D. Now, 
when I turn D off and then I turn C on, uh, C is this one, control self, uh, self switch C. Now, by turning D off and turning C on, this page is now the highest page where the conditions are met. And it's parallel, so it immediately starts to run. And this is the thing that says, show text. Do you want to try another combat? Show choices, yes or no. When yes, I'm going to use this script to basically turn off switch A, B, and C of this event, right? So, um, and, 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 you know, I'm doing it. So actually, I didn't even need to do this as a um, script, right? I could have done this uh, through the command control self switches A off, B off, C off, right? So I could have done this manually here because I'm inside this event. I'm turning off switches in the event I'm in. So I could have just used those, but instead I have one script that's turning off A, B, and C all at the same time. So this one gets turned off, this one gets turned off, this one gets turned off. So that means I'm back to this page where I can have the values reset, right? And then I can go from there. Uh, so that's what that's doing. So when, uh, when, when I, uh, that's what this script is doing. It's turning D off, turning C on, and then go, go through page, the, the page that has the C as the, um, condition. And it gives you a ch option, right? To, uh, oops, I forgot we didn't finish that. Uh, it gives you an option to, uh, do it again or not. So when yes, flip these switches. When no, show text very well. I'm sorry, this is saying very well. When no, very well, set movement route for the player to not repeat, and that will set the player free. The player can move. The change transparency. So um, again, I showed you in the system file, right, the system, that the game starts with the player transparent, so you can't see the player's sprite. This is turning transparency on, so the player appears on the screen, the map, to move around. And then this is turning control self switch D on so that it moves to this page where it doesn't do anything, right? No more parallel, doesn't have anything to do, it just sits there, right? So that's what uh, this, this page does. Do you want to do it again? When yes, turn off all these switches so it goes back to page one. When no, fine, set the player free. Turn the transparency off so the player appears on the map and can move around. Turn self switch D on so it moves to this page. Okay. All right. Now, I know this is getting long, but um, we're 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 getting close to being there. So that was the first portion. Now, if none of this is true, so meaning that they actually got higher than a twelve, right? So their 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 uh, modified role is higher than a twelve. If that's the case, well then we're going to do the evasion option. And this is something I added after I did that first demo. So I take my control variable, evasion die d20 roll is set to random number from 1 to 20. And then the evasion die 20 roll is being modified by Priscilla's defense. So I'm adding Priscilla's defense to the evasion roll. And then what it's doing is it's still moving reads picture. So move picture one, read, across the screen to, you know, touch or almost touch Priscilla's picture. And then it's going to check. What was the results of my evasion? So if, conditional branch, evasion D20 roll is greater than the D20 roll, that was reads modified roll for the attack, if it's greater than that, then go ahead and play the sound effect of the wind. Um, show the text. Instead of miss, it shows evaded. So basically, you can copy and paste this from above. So instead of miss, it's evaded. And then um, this is showing that text above uh, Priscilla. And then it's jumping to label evaded. It's jumping down here. Why? Because... Um, 
The next part is going to be if they actually hit. So the first thing it does is it says, hey, was it evaded? If not, jump forward in the event. And if this is not true, then go ahead and do the uh, read actually hit Priscilla. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention here uh, that I did not build because it would never happen in the way I set this up. The way I set this up was the the person the 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 Reed or Priscilla's possible defense is 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 quite a bit lower than their possible attack, right? So the way I set this up was right. Um, the attack was four to six. The defense was zero to two. So the the attack is always going to be at least two higher than the defense always. Okay. Now. Why why is that important? Why is that relevant? Well, the re the thing you have to think about is the way I have this set up, the modified attacker's die twenty roll will never um, will never be smaller than the modified evasion roll if the attacker gets a nat twenty, right? Because here's the thing. If an attacker rolls a nat 20, I don't want the defender to be able to evade. Now, maybe you do. Maybe maybe you want to set it up where, you know, if even if you get a natural 20 for a roll, if the evader has really super high defense or maybe they get a dot, an also a nat 20 on their evasion, you want them to be able to still evade. I don't think I want to do that. So if the attacker rolls a natural 20, I want that to be always be a hit. And and so when I looked at the what I had here set up, I was like, well, if the attacker rolls a natural 20 and then we add their attack, even if the defender rolls a natural 20 and add their defense, the 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 attacker's roll will always be higher than the defender's uh roll in that case. So I don't have to build anything to to make a make it accommodate well what if what if the attacker got a natural 20 but the evader's uh, role was still higher right well i don't have to deal with that cuz it's never going to happen the way i built it if you wanted to do something different you'd have to tweak this and say wait a second what's going to happen if if um if the attacker gets a natural 20 but then the evader's role is higher I still want to make it where they hit. So you'd have to figure that out. I did not do that because it because it wouldn't happen here. So um, so we want we talked about this. Now else, this is the else branch, right? So uh, it's going up here um, about the evasion. So if if it's not, if the evasion rule is is if the modified evasion rule is not greater than the modified attack rule, that's the else branch. Then play the um, sound effect for, for blow, right? I just picked one to show hit. Show animation. Okay, show animation. Um, you have to pick your animation. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to pick where it appears. So you notice you, you, it, it appears on the player, on the adventure on, which would be way over here, uh, or on one of the other events that are on the map. So this is what I was saying where show animation has to be played on an event or the player. The player, I guess, would be an event. Um, and then you have to pick uh, which animation it is, right? Which, which, what, what do you want to play as the animation? And do you wait for completion? Whatever. And this is the, um, uh, do, 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 do. where is this? Oh, this is the two, of uh, uh, page two of the event commands, show animation. So this is what I was talking about. Show animation, you pick an event to display it on. And because of that plugin, it, it's going to show it on top of re, uh, Priscilla's picture instead of underneath it. So then it's going to, uh, just like uh, uh, previously above in the event, there was the display the miss or display the evaded. This is displaying a hit. So... This can just be copied and pasted, change this to a hit, and then this, I believe, stays the same in the same location. Picture 8, blank picture 8 is showing this on the screen. 
And then I'm using the shake screen command, right? So shake screen, you give it a power, you give it a speed, you give it a duration, how long it lasts. You can wait for completion. And again, shake screen is uh, page two over here, right? Shake screen. So, so uh, basically, you, you hear the hit, you see the animation, you see the hit showing above Priscilla, and the screen shakes, okay? Um, and don't forget, Reed has already moved, right? Reed's already moved up here. So this is happening. And then it's going to check about that. Before it does damage, before it determines how much damage do, is done, it's going to check, is the natural 20 switch on? Because if the natural, the nat 20 roll switches on, it's going to do this damage. Else, so in other words, the switch is off, it's going to do this damage. Okay, so let's, let's look at this damage. So all this is doing, this is that uh, using a script to, to do the damage. So control variable, Priscilla HP, is being set to the value of Priscilla's HP. So 268 is Priscilla's HP. So the value of Priscilla's HP plus the value of Priscilla's defense minus, and uh, we'll talk about the math here in a second, the value of Reed's attack times two. So the way this works is, um, just like in math, you know, PEMDAS, right? Uh, parentheses, um, wait a second, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, uh, addition, subtraction. So in this uh, math equation, it's doing this part first. It's doing the uh, variable reads attack 266 times 2. So if reads attack is 5, times 2 it's 10. Now this is a value of 10. And then it's going to do this part over here. So take the Priscilla's hit points, let's say 20, add her defense, so say it's 2, 22, subtract 10. And so now it's a 12, right? So she went from 20 to 12 because her defense uh, protected her a little bit. Okay, that's how that math works. And the variable is you choose your variable, and then you use the script field to type that out, okay? And I, you've seen this before in my other tutorials. You're just using variables, dollar sign game, capital variables, dot value, and then in parentheses, the variable number, okay? So now, once it calculates the damage, then it's going to do that. You can copy and paste this from someplace else, the plugin, uh, it's going, uh, I'm, you're going to have to change the location though. Um, it's going to show critical hit. It's going to show the icon, uh, slash icon one, slash icon one. So on either side of critical hit, it's showing, uh, I think, a skull and crossbones, right? And I, I decided I'd put that in the middle of the screen. So this is picture nine, blank, showing this as a picture, this text as a picture. And I just had to play where I wanted it to be. You just have to test it and play where you want it to be. And now, how did I do this? Um, you guys are probably smart enough to figure this out, but I didn't want to test until I got a natural 20 in order to see if it showed up right. So all I did was I, I took this and I, and I um, used a separate event. And all that event was doing was displaying this on the map. And therefore, I could check to see where it was. So I would I, I did a quick event that said, here's Reed's picture where I want it to be. Here's Priscilla's picture where I want it to be. Here's this picture. Does it sit where I want it to sit? If no, let's tweak it. And then once I get it right, then I can throw away that event and I can put it in here uh, in, in the right. So it's going to be it's going to be a, the right spot. So if the nat 20 switch is on, do this math, show the critical hit message and um, you know, actually use this to display it on the map somewhere. Else, meaning if nat 20 switch is not on, then do this damage instead. And so this is the same as up here. It's just doesn't have that times two. So there's no parentheses, right? So it's Priscilla HP. You're going to set to the variable Priscilla HP plus Priscilla's defense 
minus reads attack. Okay. And that's going to be your damage. So this is the double damage. This is the regular damage. We still haven't showed it to the player yet though, right? We showed him critical hit. Now this is a label evaded. So remember from way up here, when I said jump to label evaded, that's where you're jumping to. You're skipping this hitting and you're jumping down here to continue. So now this next part is where we're updating the stats. So we did damage to, to uh, Priscilla. So now we have to display that. So we're updating Priscilla's stats underneath her picture. And that's just a copy and paste from wherever that was originally done. Uh, and of course, this is showing that on the on the uh, on the screen. And then this is moving Reed's picture back to where the starting was, right? So we move picture Reed's picture way up here somewhere, and then down here we're moving it back. But all this is happening so fast that it goes boop boop just like that. Okay. So this is moving Reed's pictures back. I'm going to wait one second just to let the player process, <laughs> right? What's going on? And then we're erasing picture eight and picture nine. Well, picture eight is the, um, the, 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 the picture eight is the hit, right? The hit message. And picture nine is the critical hit message, if, if that's applicable, right? So if it's applicable, it's erasing those two pictures because uh, they're not supposed to be there uh, anymore, okay? Then it's going to turn off that nat 20 roll switch because we want to make sure it's not set next time it comes through, right? We don't want to all of a sudden uh, be looping through again, you know, or coming back to, a, a you know, one of these things that is rolling to hit and have the nat 20 switch still be on. So we hit successfully. So it has to check now, conditional branch, if Priscilla's HP is less than or equal to zero, then this is very similar to what we did when Reed damaged himself. Show text, Priscilla's defeated, clear all the pictures, and then do that um, self-switches. Turn event one, turn D self-switch to fault, meaning turn it off. Turn C to on, true. And that's the page that lets you say, hey, do you want to do this again? Right? So this was the same as what it was previously above when Reed knocked himself out. And then this, and then it's gonna exit the event processing, so, so it's gonna skip this last little part here, okay? Now, this last little part is basically um, back over here on the, the um, uh, event one, it's turning B switch to true, and it's turning D to false. So, so what that's doing me is, Meaning that we were on this page, okay? So it was just sitting here, not doing anything, waiting for the common event to be done. We turn this off, and then we turn B on. Oh, sorry, B on. So self-switch B is page three. And then this is actually Priscilla's page to attack. So this kicks everything off. It gets it going. This is Reed's attack page. This is Priscilla's attack page. This is the do you want to do this again page. And this is the standby, don't do anything page, stop running in parallel. Okay. So now that's sending us back to page, um, I'm sorry, again, self switch B, page three, uh, Priscilla's uh, attack page. And it's, it's a parallel event. So that's what these last two things are doing. Using the script to uh, turn the uh, switch B off, uh, true. Uh, uh, so turn B on, turn D off. Okay, and that wraps up Reed's uh, common event. All right, so now let's go back over here. And we're now on Priscilla's page. Now, actually, before I finish with this, I do want to show something because I will forget. I have a bad memory. I will forget. Um, when you're in items, right, you can go to items or you can, in theory, go to weapons or you can go to armors, whatever. You can click on the icon field, pick an icon that you want to use, like I've been using. And if you click on it, it will tell you down here what the icon number is, right? So that's uh, icon one, the heart. 
Icon 84, right? Uh, I'm using one of these, the sword, uh, 96, 97. I'm using 97. Uh, and then I'm using the shield. Uh, I don't know where the shield is. Where's the shield? This one, uh, 128. So you can, uh, you can you know, pick the icon number that you want, and you can go check what they are. Uh, I will also say that um, I need to update my project folder with a uh, more icon sheet because, uh, for instance, over on um, uh, rpgmakerweb.com forums, uh, there's a user over there named Avery, and uh, she uh, produces a lot of, uh, of graphic material and stuff like icons and, and uh, sprites and things like that, and she has this massive icon sheet which is super cool. And, and I have to, uh, I have to uh, update that uh, so that I can, I can take advantage of those extra icons. So, so now we're on uh, the third page because the self switch B is on. This is the, high, the page, the highest page where the conditions are met. It's gonna run in parallel. So it's gonna run right away. So it does the, it's, it's very similar. It's almost identical to page two. This is Reed's page for attack. This is Priscilla's page for attack. And if you notice, as I'm clicking here, it's not it doesn't look like it's changing because it's almost the same content. So you can copy the event page. If you were here, you can copy the event page and then just tweak it, modify it. So we erase picture five. We set our die 20 roll to the saved die 20 roll. And then it does our 20 conditional checks to say, okay, what's, what's, the, what's the save die 20? And so I can show that picture on the, on the map. And then once it, gets, once it figures out which picture is correct, you know, Priscilla's showing, show text, my turn. And then it's calling the common event, troop combat test two, that's Priscilla's common event. And, and, then, and then here's the thing. This didn't do this, right? So you notice how on Reed's page, it was waiting for it to be clicked, and then it just waits 10 frames. Here, it's, it's not actually doing that. It's, it's not, nobody's clicking anything. Well, actually, you are clicking something. It's, it's waiting to be clicked. Um, but when you click it, it's calling this common event, and when the common event's done, it's going to come back here and it's going to turn uh, B off. Okay, it's going to turn B off when it's, when it's done. So we'll see what switch gets turned on when we're in the Priscilla event. Okay, but just know that when the Priscilla event is, is done, the common event is done, it's going to come back here and it's going to turn its self switch B off. So this page is no longer able to be run. So... Priscilla's event. It's very similar to Reed's event. Okay. So again, what I did was I built Reed's event and then copied and pasted it and then renamed it. And then I just, I just tweaked it. So for instance, in Reed's event, I needed to turn this self switch on. I don't have to do that with Priscilla's event. So I can not, I can just delete this. Right, so on read, this was necessary. On Priscilla, that turning that self switch uh, on is not necessary, so I just deleted it. This is exactly the same as in the read event, right? So here's exactly the same. And then the the uh, the loop starts off exactly the same. You're going to do your twenty conditional branches, and the dice is not changing its location. It's this is all the same from reads. The wait two frames is the same. This is the same. This is the same, right? So that whole loop is the same. This is the same. This is the same. This is the same. This is the same. All of this is the same from the read um, common event. Now is where we get the first change. So in the read common event, we were uh, modifying the die 20 roll by Priscilla's attack. I mean, by Reed's attack. Now we're just modifying it to uh, Priscilla's attack. And then on the read common event, we were modifying the die 20 roll by Priscilla's defense. Now we're modifying it by Reed's defense, right? Add Priscilla's attack, subtract Reed's defense. So these had to change. 
And then this, a lot of this is the same, a lot of it. So if the die 20 roll is under 12, only this has to change because instead of re removing Reed, we're moving Priscilla. We're moving picture three instead of picture one. We're going to move Priscilla from here over to here. The, the wind is the same. The, the miss is the same. But then we have to change where the miss is displayed. It's got to be over Reed's head, not Priscilla's head, right? And then we're going to move Priscilla back. So again, this line would change. Move picture three back to where it started from. And the X and Ys have to change from you know, what the read one was. This is the same. We're waiting 60 frames. This is the same. This is a lot of it's the same, but in the conditional branch, if they roll a nat one, you're going to change the show text from Reed's attack, right, to Priscilla's attack. And she hurt herself. And then the variable, you have to so you have to reduce Priscilla's hit points by Priscilla's attack instead of Reed's hit point by Reed's attack. And then this one is Priscilla's information, not Reed's information. Okay, so again, this is different from Reed's. And then this, of course, is displaying uh, Priscilla's information. And then this, again, gets tweaked a little bit. You have to change the conditional branch from if Reed's HP to if Priscilla's HP. And then the show text, Priscilla defeated herself instead of Reed. This is the same. This, I'm pretty sure, is the same. And then this is the same. Yeah, because you're going to uh, the, yeah, you're going to that page. And then the nat, uh, the nat one is off, turning that switch off. So that's, that's all the same. Now, this, I think, is different. I think this is added, okay, if I recall correctly. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go double check and verify, but um, I'm pretty sure I, I had to add this. And so what is this doing? Well, if Priscilla attacks and misses, um, before it exits, it's, it needs to um, change this event so that it's ready for uh, Reed to attack. So it's doing the self-switch script to turn um, self-switch A on, okay? So this is what happens operationally. It turns A self switch on for, for this event. It exits the processing. So it exits this common event. That means it goes back here. It exited the common event. It comes back here. It turns its own self switch B off. And then this self switch A was turned on by the common event before we left. So that means this is the highest page where the conditions are met. So this automatically starts running, which is we're back to Reed's attack. Okay, that's how that works. So we were here, we turn the A switch on, we were on. Uh, this page, we come back from the common event, we turn the B switch off, so we turn this off, this page is no longer active, A switch is on, this is Reed's attack, and it starts running in parallel. So now we're back to Reed's attack. Okay, that's what happens if she misses. And then, very similar to Reed's attack, the defense, the evasion role is the same, the evasion role is modified by this is this is different. Instead of Priscilla's defense, it's Reed's defense. Of course, this has to change from Reed's, right? Copy and pasted because you're moving Priscilla. You're moving Priscilla's picture. And then this conditional branch, this this is the same as far as the evasion die 20 roll, die 20 roll. The wind sound effect is the same. The evaded is the same. The picture uh, is making sure you show this over Priscilla. I'm sorry, you show this over Reed and not Priscilla. Jump to label, evaded is the same. Else, this is the same. Play the blow, that's the same. Show animation has to change to the blank event for Reed instead of the other blank event for Priscilla. 
This stays the same. You're still showing hit, but this is going to change to make sure you show it over Reed's head, not Priscilla's. The screen shake stays the same. So again, remember I copied this whole event, pasted it, and now I'm just changing what's different. This starts off the same, right? Um, the nat 20 roll, if it's on, if the, if the switch is on. And then we have to change this around. So this was Priscilla's HP. Now it's, we have to take Reed's HP. And then, so we're taking Reed's HP, setting it to Reed's HP, plus Reed's attack, I'm sorry, Reed's defense, minus, and then this is Priscilla's attack. So you're, it's the same script, you're just changing the variable numbers, okay? You're just changing the variable numbers. This is the same because you're still showing critical hit. This is the same because you're still showing uh, it in the same spot. It shows in the middle of the screen versus over Reed or Priscilla's head. And then the else is still there. This has to change, of course, because in the read event, it was Priscilla's hit points, right? So it's very similar to this um, once you fix it. And again, you're just changing those variables. So we change it the same way we did um, before. No, no multiply by two. And then the label evaded is the same. This, of course, has to change because this is updating reads stats, not Priscilla's from the previous common event. Um, and of course, this is different because you have to show it over uh, under read. This is different because you're moving Priscilla's picture back to where it started. So you're moving Priscilla. The weight 60 is the same. The erase 8 is the same. The erase picture 9 is the same. Uh, control switch uh, nat 20 uh, being turned off is the same. And then this is mostly the same. Um, but instead of if Priscilla's HP is less than or equal to zero, it's if, if Reed's is HP is less than or equal to zero. Change this to Reed is defeated instead of Priscilla's defeated. Clear pictures is the same. This should be the same from the previous event. And then this, um, if I remember correctly, is also uh, different because you have to um, get back to, just like I described before, you're going to leave this event, okay, so self-switch A of event 1 is being turned on, just like it was being turned on uh, up here, it's being turned on down here in case we actually hit. And as I described before, it's because we're going back here, we're going here, it comes back from the common event, it turns itself off, turns this off, which drops it to here because this was turned on, which means reads um, uh, page starts to run. Okay. And that's the whole thing. Now I know this was really, really long. If you hung, if you managed to hang out there, congratulations. I'm, I'm happy you were able to. Um, I don't like breaking these up into multiple videos. So, you know, I, I hope, I hope I explained all this um, in a way that you can understand. So essentially, just to run through it, um, how it goes from, from point to point to point to point, these two events are blank. We're just using them to show animation uh, on top of the pictures that are showing here. Um, this person isn't even visible when we play because they are transparent. This is the event that starts, that starts running. First page, parallel, right? It sets our stats. It sets our pictures. Then it says, do you want to reset your stats and let you have that option? And then it's doing our whole, what's our die 20 roll? What's our save die 20 roll? And then turn self switch A on so we can move to this page. This is the read attack page running in parallel. So it's going to make sure that the proper die 20 result is showing. So first time through, it doesn't really need this. Next time we come back to this, so Reed can attack a second time, a third time, a fourth time, this is important. So then this page is setting up the clickable picture. Picture number five for the dice is going to be clickable, and it's going to call common event 56, which is the read attack common event, waiting 10 frames. But it's not going to wait for long. As soon as you click, it goes here. 
the read common event. And then it's setting these things up, right? My NAT20 switches, my NAT1 my NAT, uh, switch, my loop, my maximum loop. It does the loop where it's showing that dice uh, changing values like it's rolling. It loops through. Then when it's all done, it takes the last roll and it says, okay, here's my final result. I'm going to save it. And was it a natural 20? If so, turn on the switch. Was it a natural one? If so, turn on the switch. Then we're going to modify our, our uh, die 20 roll. So then we can check to see, did I actually hit them? And if I did, move the picture, show that I missed, you know, move the picture back. Uh, if it's a nat one, then hurt themselves, right? And and do that. Subtract their head points, show their new stats. Um, you know, uh, if it's less than zero, they defeated themselves. Turn the pictures off. You know, make sure you're turning the switches off. Okay. And then um, if none of that's true, right, then we're going to make sure we're turning our switches. You got to pay attention to these because we got to move this event around. And then. Um, Evasion option, right? Give them a chance to evade. And then if they evade, show what happened. If not, then show the actual hit. You know, shake the screen, play the animation, you know, show the, the actual hit. And then do the damage. If it's a nat 20, do double damage. Show the critical hit. If it's not, just do regular damage. And then show it, update it. Move the people back so you're moving the pictures around. And then... Uh, get rid of the pictures you don't need. And then, you know, if they're, if the person that you're attacking is less than or equal to zero, show that they're defeated, wrap it up. Otherwise, get your um, switches moving, right? So we finish the common event for read. That sends us back over here. But what it did was we switched our, we switched our uh, self switches. So now we're on page three. When read's common event finishes, we're now on page three here, running in parallel. And it's almost identical to Reed's page, right? All this was identical. It sets up, what was my previous die of 20 roll? Make sure that's showing. Make it a clickable, well, actually, I'm sorry, it's not, a, it's not, this is not making it a clickable picture. It was already a clickable picture from before, from back here, right? It's already a clickable picture from back here. And then call the, the, the Priscilla common event, right? So call that common event once it's clicked. Here's the Priscilla's common event. Almost identical to reads, except you have to remo remove a few things and you have to change some variables. You have to change, you know, a few things around. Make sure you're dealing with Priscilla instead of read in certain things and read instead of Priscilla. Make sure you're moving the correct pictures to the right spots, right? So you just have to modify the stuff. You do have a couple differences with self switches because of the way uh, event one is working. So yeah, there are a few changes with the self switches, but other than that, it's almost identical to the reads common event. Once this is finished, right? It's turning self switch A on because it's gonna go back here it's going to come back from the common event. It's going to turn its own self switch B off. Self switch A was turned on, which is back to read. And reads page runs in parallel. And then it just keeps going. You, you know, you click, you go to reads common event, and then you come back, you go to Priscilla's common, you know, Priscilla's page, you go to Priscilla's common event, then you end up going back to this page, reads common, uh, reads page until eventually somebody loses and you end up on this page and you get the choice. Do you want to do this again or not? If you don't, you end up on this page and everything ends. And if you do, you end up on this page where you can restart it all over again. Okay. That's, that's how this is working. Now, again, this may be more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but it works. It actually works. So um, one event here that has five pages, four of them are parallel. This one is not, right? Four of them are running in parallel. And we have two common events. 
right? Reed's common event and Priscilla's common event. And we have our two blank events so we can show animations. Again, th that, you know, if you stuck through this whole thing uh, and you're still with me, congratulations. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I will say that I'll just repeat this. Every time I'm working on an event like this and I get to a spot where I'm like, I'm not sure if that works the way I think it does, I will just make a quick little test event. Just test that one little piece. Make sure it's doing what I want. Is the picture showing where I want it to be? Or is that math in the variable working right? I test that and then I just delete that event and, and put it where it's supposed to be in the larger event. Um, so, and again, some of these things I did was, it was fixes, right? I added some of this stuff as fixes because things weren't working right. Um, but from what I can tell, this works the way it's supposed to work. I, I haven't found any more problems with it. Or I haven't found any bugs. Um, so again, I hope this helps folks. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. I hope you can take this and build off of it and do other really cool things. Um, you know, if, if these videos are helpful, uh, or if you at least appreciate the time that this takes, please consider liking, subscribing, getting notifications, leaving comments. If you have questions about this, leave a comment. If I wasn't sufficiently clear, I hope I was, but if I didn't, if I didn't explain something clearly enough, um, you know, leave a comment. I'll try to help you. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if you do, if you're, if you're a really experienced user and you're watching this and you, and you suffered through this and you get to the end and you say, you know what, you could do this differently, or, you know, maybe this isn't doing, you know, maybe this is going to cause, I don't know. If you have suggestions or something, please feel free to leave a comment, right? I'm, I'm very open to that. I'm, I'm thankful for when people try to help me out. Um, so anyway, I have some more stuff I do want to show. I just don't know when I'm going to get around to doing it. Um, I'm, I'm playing with um, uh, uh, turn-based movement on the map right now. So I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of messing around with that. I've got something uh, in the final stages of testing uh, fairly simple. So anyway, um, I hope this is helpful, folks. Thank you. I'm glad you found my channel. And uh, again, consider leaving comments. Let me know uh, if, if this is, if this is going to be helpful. Uh, you know, if you think you can use this, if, if you end up doing something else and, and you want to share and say, hey, I took this and I ran with it and I ended up doing this other thing and it was really cool, by all means, share. Uh, so apologize for the length of this video, folks. Um, I'm, I'm glad you stuck in there if you did. And I, I just honestly hope this is helpful for somebody. Um, so I'll get up more stuff when I get a chance. In the meantime, folks, uh, happy gaming, happy game developing. I hope you have an awesome day and uh, I will talk to everybody later. Bye.